The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 3rd, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now today, you and I, we want to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know that I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question and you can't call in, Stevie's got your back. Send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject, can you please put radio show question. And of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Well, right now, we've got a slightly mixed bag out there. That mix is really only coming from the semis, which are trading to the upside just by about three-tenths of a cent. That would be an 18-point move. To the downside, you've got the Dow off 263, S&P down 20, NASDAQ off 45, Russell's down 18, Trend is down 195. You've got gold trading up $2, silver's up 15 cents, light sweet crude is up $3, natural gas is up 6 pennies. Um, 30-year treasury. Where's that? Up? Man, my screens have really gotten screwed up. Stevie's got a little bit of work to do today. No problem. Um, oh, it's supposed to be right there. This is so strange. What in the heck is going on with my computer system? Whoops, that's the wrong thing. Ay, ay, ay. Z24. There we go. The 30-year treasury is down uh, six to about a half a point, print out 123.25. Now, our leaders in the clubhouse to the upside, we begin with market taxes holdings up 13 bucks, 5%. Constellation Energy, 11 bucks, 4.5%. Vistra Corp up $9, 7%. Feuda Holdings up six bucks, 5%. Accenture is up nearly six bucks. It's a one and a half percent move. Our shakers to the downside, led by Regenerate Pharmaceuticals off 13, 14 bucks and headed lower. Uh, it's off a little over 1%. Thermo Fisher Scientific off about ten dollars or one and a half percent. Ferrari down nine bucks, two percent. Elevens Health eight bucks, one and a half percent. And Charter Communications down eight bucks as well. That's a two and a half percent move. So let's begin our day. Let's take a look at New York Stock Exchange, the advanced client indicator out there. That's the difference between the nineteen and thirty nine. Uh, day period of the uh, of its advanced decline line. Here we can see we're at the minus 105 level. We closed below the zero threshold level yesterday and the day before. Tells us that the sellers are the ones that are taking control of the general markets out there. Uh, oversold condition uh, would be when we get down to the minus 150 level. So we're not that far away. If we take a look at spot VIX, it's trading above its 50-day exponential moving average. The 50-day is the red line. 1732 is the print. We are uh, 1732 is the number. We are at 2027. Both those indicators suggest that sellers have the upper hand out there. We take a look at the Apogee uh, pivot point out here that came in for the ES Mini. We saw a nice rally this morning. That was at the uh, 10 o'clock uh, time frame between 10 and 10.30 out there. And price rallied right up into that Apogee pivot point, 57.64. Key area to watch on any rally. If you take a look at the NQ, the number is 20044.50. Uh, again, price went up and tested that level a couple different times, a key area of resistance. In the case of Goldilocks, that's going to be at 2677.90. Now, these are short term indicators out there. These are 30 minute charts that we look at. Um, 
uh, just to get a, get a gauge as to what's happening. But if price does close above those levels that I just gave you, that's short-term bullish, not short-term bearish. In the case of silver, it's been trying to get above its apogee pivot point. That comes in at the price point of 3207. We clear that, stay above that, all of a sudden resistance becomes support or potentially become support. Light free crude is just rallying substantially. It's up by seven, it's a, it's a it's apogee pivot point. That's what I'm trying to get out. I know it's tough sometimes, is at 70.65. And take a look at that US dollar index, 101.40. Is it's a, a pivot point? We're trading well above that. Looks like the US dollar index wants to continue to move higher. What else do we want to look at? Well, let's go over to Stevie's other charts out here. I think the question in everybody's minds, or a few people's minds are, well, wait a minute, Stevie. You said we're trading below profile support on the uh, daily ES mini. You said that the advanced client oscillator um, is suggesting that uh, sellers are the ones that have control as well as the spot fix index. So what gives here? Well, that's a great question. Let's go turn over. Let's go turn over. Let's go uh, move over to our white background charts. We'll have those up in a minute. This is not where I want to start. This will be the daily time frame chart. But instead, for the equity future contracts, instead, let's look at the equal weighted ETFs. Let's see if there's anything that we can gauge out of here. Is the issue in the uh, with regard to the S&P 500 is the issue uh, just simply that it's the heavy weighted stocks that are holding the market up. Well, let's take a look at the RSP. So we're looking at the central panel. Well, screw that. We're going to look at the only thing we're going to look at is the RSP. What do we know about it? So we know that this does not have a topping pattern. This negated a TD nine count top. There's an actual A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. It has not reached its objective. What price here is doing, it is consolidating with inside its daily profile. The bottom of its profile is at 176.88. We're trading at 176.89. So the equal weighted is saying, hey, guess what? This is not just a top-weighted uh, situation out here. The top-weighted stocks are not the only ones that are holding up the S&P 500. So that's got to make us say, hmm, something to think about. Now, if we take a look at the SPY, we can see the SPY really has that same set of patterns and negated TD9 count top, price consolidating with inside its profile out here. So this is uh, with regard to the moves inside the S&P 500. We can go take a look at the top eight weighted stocks inside but this is going to this is giving us a fairly good idea as to what's going on if you take a look at the qqew that's a chart in the upper left hand side what we can see here is a uh, price negated at, well it never had a td9 count top quite frankly it also has an a to b equal cd pattern to the upside out here it has not reached its price objective and price is traded above profiles it's trade above 122.52. That's the top of the profile for the equal weighted ETF. Now take a look at the weighted ETF, the QQQs. They're also trading with inside their profile as well. Um, so nothing here is suggesting that this is just a top weighted stocks that are holding the Qs up or the uh, or the S&P 500. Now in the case of the Dow, um, look, I believe it is the top 10 stocks inside the Dow represent over 50% of the index. Don't quote me on that, but you can do a quick uh, research, uh, quick uh, 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 internet research, and you can find out. Now, in the case of the equal weighted side for the Dow, it is weaker than the uh, top weighted stocks. Why? Because we are now trading below the bottom of its daily profile. That's at 35.75. We're trading really above the top of the daily profile for the diamonds. That profile level is 418.98. We're at 419.26 as we speak right now. So, yeah, these markets are really interesting out here. Uh, they are suggesting, quite frankly, that we're at A to B equals CD patterns to the upside. I know, that's not what those technical indicators are telling us. So what do we do? Let's just trade the patterns. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer. 
the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're taking a look at the ES mini charts out here. The uh, time frame that I would be watching is the 60-minute time frame out here. Let's open up this chart and let me share the reasons why. First, we take a look at this chart. We can see this formed a nice road momentum indicator bottom at 11 o'clock in the morning. This was uh, yesterday. And that pattern is still held up. In fact, it was tested at about 4 o'clock this morning, 4 uh, to 5 this morning, with a uh, which formed a TD9 count bottom. So we know that that is a strong area of support or appears to be a strong area of support. To the upside, we took a look at that uh, Apogee pivot point, which for the ES Mini comes in at the uh, 57.64 level. At 57.69.50, we've got the 60-minute uh, uh, TD9 count breakdown resistance area. So that also held as resistance. So watch 57.69.50. If we close above that, we likely add higher. This is a sideways consolidation. So you could measure that sideways consolidation if there's a breakout to the upside. And that would give you a, a one price objective. Of course, if you measure that consolidation and we break to the downside, you could also use that as what the downside move would be. It looks like that consolidation between about 57, what is it called, 57.70 and 57.25. So we basically have what's called a, a, a almost a, a 50 point move out there in the ES Mini, whichever way this breaks. I am not saying it's going to break. It will eventually, but it's not like I'm saying it's going to break at 11.20 or even 2 o'clock. I don't know when it will break. We do know that with regard to the ES Mini, it is really trying to hold this bottom area in the 57.20-ish range out there. The other charts, uh, not that they aren't uh, of much use to us, it's really that 60-minute ES Mini chart, I think, that's the one to keep your eye on. Let's go take a look at the NQ out here and see what it's suggesting to us. No idea whether it's going to be its 60-minute time frame chart uh, when these charts pop up here, but visually, what we're looking looking for is uh, where are those bottoms that have come in. Uh, we have not taken out uh, yesterday's low to, to the best of my knowledge, but let's just make sure. So let's take a look at the 60-minute chart just for the heck of it. And here on the 60-minute chart for the NQ, you have a buy the D point bottom pattern. 
uh, that is uh, formed out here. That went ahead and confirmed at 11 o'clock uh, in the morning. That was yesterday. Price pulled down, tested that area, never got down to that low. That's kind of a bullish signal. We can see that price has found resistance. Now, you got a bearish structured 60-minute profile at 20.061.50 is that resistance level. But I would say that price would need to close above the high from 12 noon yesterday, and that's at 19.996. I'm sorry, 20. 09025 20 if we close above that we likely head higher let me see if there's any other chart here that maybe makes more sense to look at not really yeah, not really. Nothing else that I see out there. So those are the parameters that I'd use with regard to uh, the NQs out here. We do have a pretty decent move inside of the U.S. dollar index. Let's go check on the um, let's go check on the three. Uh, uh, currency pairs that represent 83.1% of the total. So the reason that the U.S. dollar index is moving higher out here is because, uh, is because well, it's because of a couple of different things. Let's take a look at the first thing, the largest weighting, which is the euro. The euro right now is traded to... Why didn't that work? Oh, there we go. Okay. So the euro is trading below yesterday's low. We can see uh, several lower highs out there. That's suggesting to you and I that what the euro wants to do is go target its breakout level. The breakout level is 1.0910. Now, as the euro moves lo lower here, it's getting weaker. The U.S. dollar index is getting stronger. So it looks like, and the, this is a, as I mentioned, or if I didn't mention, 57% weighted uh, uh, for the euro itself. If you look at the yen, we talked about the yen. We gave the yen out as a gigantic nice trade here to the upside because on a daily basis it was forming a TD9 count bottom completed on the 17th and then we got a TD9 count uh, bottom that confirmed on the uh, week of September 20th out there those have worked and we can see that on a daily basis prices trade above its TD9 count breakdown level this would be day number two that would be telling us that the breakout is real out there I sort of believe it's real however and as the euro as the euro as the yen is moving higher here it's actually weakening against the US dollar so that's also adding strength, as we can see. Now, in the case of the yen, the real key level for it is going to be its oscillator and change line. It's printed It's printed all the way. It's, it's, it's tagged that level, that level being 147.40. We've been up to 140, well, 147.24, basically. So it's very close to tagging that level. If we see a close above that, and who asked about the dollar? That was Dude was asking about the dollar. If the yen closes above that, come tomorrow on a weekly basis. Now, does it have to be tomorrow? No. But if it does close above that tomorrow, that tells you that the yen wants to even rally further up there and that price target will be 158.86 out there the third the third currency pair to make up the 83 percent weighting inside the u.s dollar index is the great british pound great british pound had a td9 count top that's led to lower price price right now testing this breakout area the breakout area is at 1.311 let me get rid of this a to b pattern here on the weekly time frame although that would uh, likely confirm a sell the d point top on the weekly chart so when we look at this right now, price is testing key support. That's its oscillator and change line. 1.3, let's say 1. Point, didn't say 1.314. 1.314 is the area to watch come tomorrow. If price closes below that, that's signaling to you and I that the uh, Great British Pound wants to weaken again the U.S. dollar again. That would put strength. So right now, each of the the three top daily weighted currency pairs that make up the U.S. dollar index are suggesting that what the U.S. dollar index wants to do is continue its rally. Again, the next price target for that, we took a look at that during the uh, uh, update. Uh, the next price target is 102.02 .02 for the U.S. dollar index. If price, let me just switch panels here. If price closes above that, that is at that level that I just gave to you is the price where a counter trend move would come to an end. Let me just simply open up the U.S. dollar, the December U.S. dollar contract out here. What you can see is this is a bullish structured profile. When that foreign price was well below that profile, we we'll look for two days below that to then tell us that any rally into the center of that bullish structured profile would be where a counter trend rally would end. Well, heck, this has been up here for several weeks or below, I should say, the bottom of that profile. So 10202, dude, and everybody else out there, that's the real level to watch inside the U.S. dollar. Price closes above that on a daily time frame. We head up to the 10270. It also tells us that the move inside the U.S. dollar index is not a counter trend move out there.
So um, let's uh, let me close out those charts. Let's go into some requests. We just have a few that have come in. The first one coming in was from Mr. Bill, uh, and Mr. Bill wanted to take like a ticker symbol H U M. So let me make sure I do this correctly here. And Mr. Bill will be the first one to whack me upside my head if I didn't do this. So got to make sure that we do that, which is to change screens. So we're going to do that out here. And now what I need to do is actually get oh, let me get rid of these equal weighted ETFs out there. They're just taking up uh, taking up the resources. So HUM is Humana. And it was just a question. Oh, I'm not at Humana Church. Let me get there. Sorry. And it's just a, to, a just a general overview. Well, first, this looks absolutely horrible. So let's open up the monthly chart. Let's look at the longer term picture for Humana. Humana is trading into a swing point that takes us back on a monthly basis to the March 2020 low. How about that? Now, that low did volume of 53 million shares. So far, yeah, for the month, you know, and it's hard to say, we're 28 million shares. Last month, we did uh, 31 million. I guess you could take 28 million shares divided by about two. Well, that would be 14, and multiply that times 20 trading days. So what's that get you to? About 350 million shares or so going into, is that possible? Did Stevie do the right math? Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We'll be right back. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and, most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. 
Before investing, carefully consider funds investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the chart uh, for Humana. We're looking at the monthly time frame. We were looking first at what it's doing, which is uh, targeting the uh, March 2020 low. That low out there is down at 208. Uh, volume on that on a monthly base was 53 million shares. We're already at 29 million shares, two and a half days in the month. So it's going to go target that low. It's likely going to take that low out. 208.25. Why will it likely take it out? Well, first, this has a new A to B equals CD pattern on a monthly basis that is setting up here. The first one actually formed a buy the D point pattern. That first one bottomed on May uh, May 20 um, in May of May of this year here. So the A to B, I don't have that drawn in here. The A point was the same thing. The high from November 2022. The smaller A to B equals CD was a, a B point in July of 2023, and the C point was that high in October 2023. That was confirmed with a bullish engulfing. And what price did was it rallied right up into the top of its monthly profile and its oscillator and change line. So there was a market open. Is that the question back then? Yeah, I think that it was. I sure think that it was, uh, uh, M. But uh, e even if it wasn't, let's say, what we do have now is uh, we're going to confirm. But of course, we don't know where price is going to end. Let's assume that price closes below the May 2024 lows out there at 298.61. That had volume of 36 million shares out there. And again, today, we're already at 28. So that would be a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside that would take Humana down to about the 130-ish um, the area out there. So Mr. Bill, that is the monthly time frame chart. So longer term, this is a it wants lower price. If you look at the weekly chart, it, it's negating a, a TD9 count bottom. That suggests lower price on a daily time frame. We've got no bottoming signal here. Big gap to the downside yesterday. Uh, so without any bottoming signals daily, weekly, and most certainly monthly out here, it does look like Humana wants to head lower out there. So that's what the charts are communicating to us. I hope that helps you out, Mr. Bill. And as always, thanks so much for your request. Let's take a look at SMMT. This is for Do It Inside the Tiger's Den. Let's get that chart up on our screen. And the question is looking for a bottom. Well, I think we're going to continue looking for a bottom here. Why? Because we are negating a TD9 count bottom pattern today. That TD9 count in effect took place and took hold September 27th. That low out there that was bar number eight. That low was 1950. We are now trading below that. Uh, what does that do? Do we have an A to B equal CD pattern to the downside? Well, the B point that we would uh, shoot, I don't like to use the same B and C point out there. Well, so let's just do this. Right now, price is trading inside a gigantic, and I do mean ginormous, uh, daily bear structured profile. This suggests to me, dude, that uh, price wants to go target a bottom of its profile. So I would say 1408 would be an area that we would take a look at. Even below that, this could be pulling back to 1030. Let's look at the weekly chart. The weekly chart says, okay, I heard you, Stevie, but I'm not going to release information until I get down to 18. 10 ish because that's the green oscillator and change line now price could find support there but if price closes below that level and it may be 1808 1805 i don't know but if it closes below that oscillator and change line that's then going to tell us that we're headed lower it's lost its momentum the headed lower could take us to 883 934 you have a completed td9 count top on the monthly time frame price should pull back over time to its oscillator and change line, currently printed at the 1051 level. So you're looking for a bottom, um, and that's fine. You now absolutely have to wait. Well, you don't have to, but the charts are saying you got to wait. And the first waiting period isn't that far below. It's at that 1010 level. And what you would do there as price is moving there, you look to short-term time frame charts to see if there's any sign of a uh, bottom out there. And if there isn't, or if price closes below that, then we're definitely headed lower. And it might be in the 14 area, might be in the $10 area. Uh, that you'd be looking for a uh, bottom out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to uh, Summit Therapeutics out there. I think they need a little bit of uh, medical help. Let's go take a look at uh, URA. This is for LB. 
LB is still long. I think LB is going to be long for a while. If we take a look at the daily time frame chart out here, Lee, price is likely going to go target the 3088 level. 3088 happens to be the TD9 count breakdown area. On a weekly chart, 3065 is the area that it wants to target. That is the top of its bullish structure daily profile. If price can close above that, well, then you certainly get 3088 out there. You close above 3088, you probably head back to its highs out here. And I'm just going to use the weekly highs that we're looking at for May, uh, May 2024, the bottom of which is uh, 3128. So that's not a big deal. But if you can close inside that, then you're likely to do it with more than 19 million shares, and you are likely to go target 3366. On a monthly time frame, Lee, you had a, a TD9 count top, and it's actually still in place, a Rhodes momentum indicator top. And what price did, the work to the downside is done as price took got back to its bullish structured monthly profile. That level held. It was tested and rejected in August. It was tested and rejected in September. September. So 3036 is where it wants to head to. So what's your resistance? 3036, 3065, followed by 3088. And those are the levels that price is likely to go target. So Lee, good to hear from you. Thanks for writing in. And uh, we'll look forward to your next request. Dan, inside the Tiger's Den, would like to take a look at tick symbol LTBR. Now, unfortunately, Dan, I didn't write down what it was that you wanted. It just says LTBR. That's why I didn't write it down. That's probably not the reason I didn't write it down, but that is the reason. So what we're going to look at here, let's look at the monthly chart, which uh, doesn't have any of my signals up there. Why is that? Don't know, but we're going to correct that situation. So on a monthly time frame, we had price that it, we have price that is trading with inside its monthly profile. Don't know if I've got any kind of bottom signal or not. It doesn't appear that I do, but it's trading with inside that profile. So the resistance zone happens to be between about three. 18 and 366. You're trading inside it now. You're trading inside that zone with the weekly chart, getting up, testing and rejecting its TD9 count breakdown resistance level, 341. The week is not law. Uh, the week is not over, and so a close above 341 would be a positive. But you've got another area of potential resistance at the 364 level. Now, I don't know how strong a resistance 364 really is because price was able to take that out for more than two consecutive sessions back in the, the uh, June time frame out there. So I don't think that's a very large uh, resistance area out here. On a daily time frame, gigantic wide-ranging bar today. You know, the only resistance that it appears to be dealing with right now in a daily time frame, Dan, is the high from July 29th. That high is a swing point, did volume of 133,000 shares. Today, you are up with uh, 719,000 shares. That level was tested earlier this morning. That says that that swing point high gets tested again, 341. Of course, you close above 341 today, then we're definitely headed higher. Where's the next resistance level on a daily time frame? I don't really think it possibly get back into it. And it, it, uh, where is it? It's in the July time frame out there. Whether that's the high from July 15th or the high from July 8th, which I'd be more likely uh, looking at. And what you'd look at there is you'd look at the bottom of that swing point, which is 369. Uh, and, and if you can get into that on a daily basis with 733,000 shares or more, that's going to tell you that you go test that high. You're already at 724,000 shares for the day right now. So LTBR wants to head higher. That likely resistance level, again, being 341, you get above that, 366, you get above 366, you're off to the moon. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97, and with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're taking a ticker symbol EVGO. EVGO is the actual name of the company. Having one killer day out here, gap into the upside. Uh, it's traded above daily profile. No topping uh, pattern that's in place out here. Looks like it wants to extend that rally. This is day number two of consecutive days higher out there. The weekly time frame chart formed uh, two weeks ago formed a Rogeman Dominicator top. Price pulled back, tested, rejected that green oscillator and change line. We're trading above profile. This is in bullish condition out there. You can draw an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. You can see that in place. We're probably more than the one to one. You'd be looking for a bearish reversal candle to identify some kind of a uh, top out there otherwise this heads higher heads higher to where well the monthly time frame chart is the only thing that could be the sticking point out here at jambalaya six dollars and 48 cents is the number the price can close above 648 let's see the high so far today has been 644 648 is a td9 count bottom pattern i'm sorry it's a td9 count breakdown level for its TD9 count uh, bottom pattern that formed out there. A close above 648 and you continue to move higher. Again, no topping pattern or signals or counts or anything along those lines. It's just that TD9 count breakdown resistance long term. I'd stay with this trade if you're in this trade out there, but that's really your battleground is 648. So thank you for taking the uh, time to write in a uh, question. It's a charging station builder along I-10. Okay, uh, great. Let's go take a look at the uh, top eight instruments inside the S&P 500. Let's try to, you know, we went and took a look at the equal weighted ETFs versus the weighted ETF. What we determined was uh, that the uh, move to the downside, the, the market's not being held up just by the uh, top eight instruments. But let's go take a look at what those top eight instruments are telling us. So we take, we start with Apple. So in the case of Apple, what do we have out here? We do not have any kind of a topping pattern. Um, I see maybe a sideways consolidation, but right now what price is doing, it's testing the top of its daily profile. And it is not closed below that, so uh, and it's been tested several times. So you want to watch 224.92. If you close below 224.92, Apple probably takes us back to its buy zone 218.08 to 228.82. Second weighted stock, I believe, is still Microsoft. This may have changed in order a little bit over the past a week or so. If we take a look at Microsoft, what do we have out here? Um, you know, did this complete its TD9 count uh, uh, or its A to B equals CD pattern to the upside? It's hard to say, but we do know the TD9 count breakdown resistance level, which can be a top, 
proved to be a top this time, 441.48. We closed below the bottom of daily profile yesterday. We're trading below it today. Uh, we're trading below it, uh, or, or, or close below it three days ago, close below it yesterday. This tells us 40790 is where Microsoft is very likely headed to. In the case of NVIDIA, NVIDIA is trading above profile resistance. It's trading into a prior swing point. That prior swing point is from the trading session of September 26th. 302 million shares were traded, then we're moving up into it right now with 153. So it's moving up with similar type of volume. If price closes above 121.80, uh, we ought to see NVIDIA go tag the high, and the high out there was at 127.67. Let's take a look at Amazon. Amazon is trading below profile support. Um, do I have any kind of a uh, topping signal? I don't. But we got a profile change in trend that formed four days ago. The next level of support on the daily time frame is 165.85. To do a thorough review, we really should take a look at the weekly charts. I don't have the, uh, the time right now to put those up. But you should do that as well if you're in any of these instruments based upon the daily information I've given you. If we take a look at Facebook out here, Meta, uh, Meta will go ahead and uh, – Negate a TD9 count top today with a close about 576.88. We're at 581 right now. We're trading into a swing point that had volume with 15 million shares. We already have 4 million shares. So similar type volume as price moves up. But it does look like it wants to move higher, especially if it negates that TD9 count top. If we take a look at Google, what do we have out here? We have Google that's trading with inside. Well, it's trading above right now. The top of its new profile it formed yesterday. The top is at 167.08. The bottom, 162.87 out there. A close above 167.08 says we go run into that TD9 count breakdown resistance level one more time. One more time would be at 169.38. If we close above that... 169.38 level, we likely head higher out there. If we look at um, Berkshire Hathaway, BRK.B, what do we have? A TD9 count top, price trading with inside is bullish structured profile. More likely than not, price is going to go target 447 to 449, but we haven't even gotten down to that level. And finally, we finish off the top eight looking at Abgo. We take a look at this, we do not have a topping pattern. However, let me get my cursor out here. Looks like we tested and rejected its swing point high. So the swing point I'm looking at was from June 18th. Volume there, 8.6 million shares. It was tested with 24 million shares. You know what that tells us? That tells us we should be back up at that high. We pushed into a high with volume. We did not. Did we retest it? No. We did. Well, let me just make sure. Let's. The low of that swing point is 178.50. What was the high in this trading day? 174. No, so we have not retested that. So you just have a consolidation inside its profile. That's between 165.14 and 174.58. So that is the top eight instruments inside of the S&P 500 from a weighting standpoint. I forget what they actually, what those top eight instruments work out to being inside the S&P. It could be as much as 30%, but don't quote me on that. But these are the instruments, the top eight instruments here. I don't, I, we did have a few that were breaking down. Microsoft looks like it wants lower price. Amazon looks like it wants lower price. Berkshire maybe, but not lower price. You know, it's just maybe pulling back into profile support out there. So these top eight, there's not a ton. If you're wondering why is it that the market's holding up well, all you have to do is really look at that set of charts out there. You know, I don't have the chart up here for Costco. I know that's in the top eight for the, um, for the NASDAQ. 100. It's just testing. I'm looking at a different screen out here. It's testing profile support at 876.20. Uh, Tesla has a TD9 count top. It's trading below profile support. It's likely going to go target its breakout level of 230. I'm not going to change the screens out here because there's just a couple instruments. Um, and that was it, really. The only difference would be uh, Tesla and Costco. So in the case of Tesla, if it closes below 246.17 today, odds would then favor a move back to the 232.13 level where price broke out from. Um, so that's the top eight instruments really for the S&P as well as the NDX 100. I see a question out here. Can we take a look at PayPal? So let's get over to my other set of screens out here. Let's pull PayPal, PYPL up on our screen. Let's go see what its charts are communicating to us. I've got to get those initiated here. So PYPL, this will take just a few seconds. Um, the time remains, natural gas day and weekly. Okay. So I can tell you on the daily time frame chart is yesterday's high was a TD9 count top. 
So with regard to natural gas. So you want to watch that high. That was $3 even, Stephen. But we'll try to get, well, we'll be able to get back to it, I think. If we take a look at PayPal. PayPal has a road momentum indicator top on a daily time frame with a consolidation with inside profile. The bottom of its profile and its bullish structure profile has held that support, 76.50. TD9 count top on the weekly time frame suggests that price wants to pull back to 70.83. Well, if you close below 76.50, then price likely head to 70.84. The monthly time frame for PayPal is bullish. Roach Mentum Indicator bottom closed above the top of its uh, profile two months ago, as well as last month, and we're trading above it right now. So you just got this daily. Now, the daily TD uh, Roach Mentum Indicator top, the work is done to the downside as long as price continues to hold 76.50. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We get back from this break. We're going to go take a look at, uh, we'll pull up the natural gas charts, and then I'll try perhaps to get, if we can, get the time, take a look at BAM and GCT. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. So we got the charts here for natural gas up on our screen. We got that nice TD nine count roads momentum indicator bottom back on September third. Uh, we now have a TD nine count top that went ahead and completed yesterday. Now price is trading above the top of its daily profile at two point eight nine five. As long as that condition remains, its overall signal is neutral. Are we neutral on the uh, weekly time frame? No, we are not. Nice roads momentum indicator bottom, and uh, that is now taking price to resistance. That's the top of its profile. You want to watch tomorrow two point nine three four. If natural gas closes above 
of that tomorrow. That's a bullish outcome, and we likely uh, to continue to head higher. Now, the daily's got to take out that TD9 count top, so you still got to close above yesterday's high at 3 bucks. If you do that, 3.358 is the uh, price target. Uh, 3.08 is the price target on the monthly time frame chart out there. So TD9 count top on the daily. Watch both yesterday's high as well as the 280 area should, in fact, price pull back. Uh, let's take a look at uh, ticker symbol. Where'd that go? Let's take a look at ticker symbol GCT. GCT formed a TD9 count top yesterday. Much like we just looked at for natural gas, it's trading above its profile uh, uh, profile resistance, oscillator and change resistance. It's neutral. A close above yesterday's high, 27.49, and you head to 34.28. This has got a TD9 count bottom pattern. For its weekly time frame, price is trading above profile resistance, its oscillator and change line. It suggests it wants to target 34.28. So it's just waiting on the signal from the daily time frame that it wants to and that it should move higher. If we take a look at uh, ticker symbol here, BAM, BAM. Well, BAM has a uh, Rhodesman Dominicator top that formed on the trading day of September 26. If price can close above that high of that shooting star, 4803, you continue to head higher. The weekly chart has no topping pattern. The monthly chart has no topping pattern. We basically have made new all-time highs yesterday. Um, so everything is looking pretty good here. It is losing its momentum just a little bit, but it's got a top, as I said, um, and that could take price back to 45. 43. We don't have that signal as we speak right now, but that's going on with BAM. Lastly, if we take a look at the ES Mini out here, again, I would just simply pay attention to the 60-minute chart out there. We talked about its nice TD9 count bottom that formed this morning at 5 a.m. going against the Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom. The key level for the ES Mini, 57, 57, 69, 50. If you close above that, you're going to see a further rally into the uh, end of the afternoon. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. I'll be back with you tomorrow, 11 a.m. sharp. Have a terrific Tuesday, and thanks again for joining me. Be safe out there.